but we're not recording. We're not not recording yet, but there may be it attendees. Says, it, says it's being recorded. Does it say it's recorded? Oh, yeah, it does, it does say, say that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, did oh, you? Yeah. Um, oh, hmm. I wonder if they made that automatic because I didn't click record. Sonia, you didn't click record, did you? No. Nope. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, Katie Hello. and Robin. Hi, Katie. Hi, Andy's picture. <laughs> Hello. Hi, and Diana. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, David. Hi, Diana. Hi, Robin. Hello. Hello. Hi. Sarah. Hi. Sonia. John. So I know Sam will come, and I haven't heard from Sarah Isinger. Anna will be late. I know that. So maybe we just wait another minute or two. And I am only on for about ten or fifteen minutes, unfortunately. The uh, I've got to bring the family up to the fair. So unless we want to yeah. adjourn, oh. or unless we want to group there. Um, Oh, well, what an interesting but, idea. I think that violates, even though it would be very open, open meeting law. <laughs> so, this, yeah. so this is the Rotary Fair? It's already there? Yeah, yeah. The, oh, uh, the annual fair. I, I was shocked. I saw all the, uh, all the rides set up, and I did not expect that to happen. But we're leaving tomorrow for the weekend, so this is our <laughs> only window of time for it. Okay. Totally understand. Well, what's a quorum for us? Is six enough? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, then, and you don't see Sam out there somehow in attendees or whatever. So so Sam was here earlier. He was the first one in and then he, um, and then he left. So I oh. imagine he'll be back. Okay. That's interesting. Um, okay, well then let's proceed. Uh, I'm Sarah Marshall, uh, representing the Recreation Commission, and I will call this meeting of the Com Community Preservation Act Committee to order at 6.02 on August 26, 2021. Um, I don't know what the updated language is for <laughs> meeting remotely, but we are a meeting meeting remotely and uh, this meeting is being recorded and will be posted. Can I, can I be heard? Yes. Hi, Sam. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Hi, Sam. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Let me just check hey. <laughs> get people off here. Okay. Um, so I've taken attendance. The first thing we need to do is elect a minute taker for tonight and maybe even for the next meeting. So we can try to have that um, take too much time. Sarah, uh, I don't know what all the procedures are, but I would uh, recommend to the committee that we continue with Sarah Marshall as our chair and with Sam, um, Sam, I'm missing your last name. Sam McLeod. 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 Okay, as vice chair, and um, it's, uh, I don't know whether you need to put that on a motion or a recommendation or what. I, I second that. <laughs> Thank you, but but let me. I appreciate it, and we'll get to that. But I first need a minute taker, someone to write all this down. So. <laughs> Anybody is it, Dave? I thought you were volunteering there for a minute, but um, I would do it. But my connection seems to be suspect based on my departure. Oh, you <laughs> I was the first one in, and then I went into vapor land for about ten minutes. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? I can try. So I will take minutes. How's that? Um, all right. So then, moving on. Um, Hey, hey, Sarah, Sandra, I, I know you'd ask for two. I can do the next one if you want to just oh, thank pencil you. that in now. Oh, yeah, that's terrific. Bet. Thanks, Andy. All right. So, uh, Dave, you, you were looking at the agenda. So, good. Um, we do need to elect a chair and vice chair, but these are temporary positions since... Oh, welcome, Sarah Isinger. Um, can you hear us? You're muted. All right, she's, she's materializing. Um, 
because many, hi, <laughs> good to see you. So many of our appointments expired on June 30th. We are allowed to continue and thank you to everyone who is continuing, but all those committees need to reappoint or appoint a new person or reappoint you um, with the exception of the at-large members. And then you have to be sworn in and all that. So at some point, hopefully by the next meeting, when we start to hear proposals, uh, we will have the, the, I don't know what to call it, the formal committee with, with terms, you know, new terms. So for tonight, and until we get to that next point, we have temporary chair and vice chair. And I think Sam and I are happy to continue in those roles. Does that, <laughs> uh, Dave made a motion. Somebody suggested it. I, I mean, I, I seconded it. Okay. Um, thank you, Diana. Does discussion? Anybody would like to suggest a different arrangement? <laughs> You're welcome to. Okay. No. All right, then all in favor of appointing me to be the temporary chair and Sam to be the te temporary vice chair of this committee until we have the, the new committee established. Uh, I have to take, you know, roll call vote. Dave? Um, aye. Thank you. Robin? Aye. Katie? Aye. Diana? Aye. Sam? Aye. Sarah? Aye. Andrew? Aye. And I am an aye. So, okay, thank you. Um, so again, it, I, so I should say, or remind you all, um, if your committees have not appointed somebody like the Planning Board, Conservation Commission, um, Anna will be here late, by the way, um, housing Authority, if they haven't yet appointed somebody, please make sure they do that. Maybe the appointments are languishing in town hall. That's, I think, true for mine, but, but the commissions, the boards have to take the first step, okay? So please make sure that's done. Um, Robin, why don't you say your bit now regarding, regarding that? Some late breaking. So, news. some late breaking. <laughs> I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be going to, Burlington, Vermont, four days a week to do a graduate program in historic preservation. And I just realized as I was reviewing the meeting materials that I can't meet on Thursdays because I'll be driving back to Amherst on Thursdays, just getting out of class. So I'm going to, um, I just sent an email to the historic commission um, to uh, what's some suggestions for who I think might make a good fit. And then I can advise whoever's making that transition, but this will be my last meeting with y'all. So it's been a pleasure. Oh, well. We'll miss you, but that's that's so exciting that you're continuing this uh, as a that historic preservation is a, at least studies, if not a career. So that's that's wonderful. That's yes, you, exactly. You, yep, you yep. seem to be smiling quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized how many meetings I don't have to go to. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be in the car for many hours, so I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. So, I didn't think know, it was a good idea to try to race onto a call no, no, no. directly out of a class on the highway. Yeah. So, I, think, I think that's a wise choice. And I will, <laughs> Diana, Diana will, I think, definitely be going off the committee once there's a new at large person. Yes, you've served. For... I think so. I mean, I've been on a long time. So, you know, I assume they will replace me. So, in case. You don't come to the next meeting. I mean, we don't know when is the last time we'll see you. I want to thank you for, for all your years of service on CPAC. It's been, it's been really wonderful to have your input and advice and careful reading and thinking. So thank you. All right. Does anyone else expect not to be coming back? It's Andrew. I think the planning board has not uh, had our conversations yet. We will, I think, at our next meeting, but I suspect that I still will be back. Um, I don't know that anybody has uh, expressed an interest to shift committees, so uh, <laughs> plan on me, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, super. All right. Um, 
Okay, with that then, can we turn to the, the minutes of our April meeting, which uh, Anna took and very, very kindly just emailed me immediately after. So I've heard from some of you about small comments and I will, I will take care of those. Um, does anybody have, if you can remember back to April, a substantially different <laughs> recollection? <laughs> All right. Oh, Diana, yes. Well, I don't know. Uh, this is sort of small, but on the other hand, Anna would be the one to deal with it, which would be to give an example of the issue in, in point number three, um, an example of the issues regarding historic preservation, because right now it's just um, sort of not I think it needs to say something to be a little clearer to people reading the minutes. What, so what? An, exa an example would be helpful. Okay. Well, I can, um, unless Robin remembers uh, what what that was. I do about. not. I, I'd I, have to look at it again, but well, I can I'll, try. No, no. I'll look. I'll. I'm taking responsibility for the minutes. So, assuming assuming that video has been posted, I will um, fill that okay. in. Yeah, good, thank you. Okay, so if I can be entrusted to make all the minor changes, plus pop in an example that Diana has requested, can we uh, go ahead and accept the minutes? Yes. Any corrections? All right, I'm moving that. Diana, was that a second? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, all right, so let's vote on that in favor of accepting the minutes as they will shortly be amended. Uh, raise your hands and I will just call out the uh, as I see. I see Dave, Katie, Diana, Sam, Sarah, Robbins, just thank you. And Andy, is your hand up? I'm gonna abstain. I'm embarrassed that I didn't get a chance to read through the minutes yet, so. Okay. All right, fine. Thank you. Um, so I'll send those out to everyone and I guess to Sonia for posting. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> All right, thank you. So is there anyone in the audience who wishes to make a public comment or ask any question regarding the CPA program? Are there any, I, I can't see the attendees, so. Are there any attendees? Yeah, we just have one attendee. Um, and if he raises his hand, I will allow him to talk. And he's not raised his hand, so I think you're okay to continue. Okay. All right, then next is Review financials, if any financials are available. I know it's very early in the year for that. So Sonia or Sean? Yeah, yeah um, we're still working on closing out fiscal year 21. So I don't have the DOR's approval of our ending fund balance yet, but I did a rough estimate and we have about 1.9 million for the 23 um, budget. Wow. Um, 1.9 and of that, about 420 is going to be debt. These are not final, so. I understand, yeah. <laughs> Will be debt service, and I'll leave you about 1.5, but we also have the $600,000 that is reserved in fiscal year 22. So if we don't use that in 22, that will become available for 23. It's, it's uh, just like free cash. Mm -hmm. It goes away at year end and it gets revoted. I would recommend that we keep a budgeted reserve, maybe consider rolling that over from year to year and maybe adding to it in case something comes up that you don't have to go out to borrow for, you'll have the cash to um, do with it. You mean instead of just throwing it into the pot and we get all, all happy with, with $2.5 million, we just 
stick with well less the debt service we yeah i mean we... yeah that's a good it's <laughs> a good approach i don't know that we need to decide anything yet but does everybody understand that recommendation that we not plan to spend it we would have it available if needed um and at some point you will also be showing us the a debt schedule um yeah we've also i think approved some projects are borrowing for some projects and we don't know when that borrowing will happen will those be yes um, estimated in the schedule or at the next at the next meeting in october we should have that all worked out the books will be closed we'll know what our debt is we just did a lot of uh, permanent bonding so we have changed some things around but that'll be there also all the balances for the old articles once i roll the books over we'll have that by old balances do you mean the individual project Balance. Right. Previously voted. I shouldn't say old balances. Okay. Previously voted projects. We'll have all the balances on that. And I'm going to try to get the uh, form out for everybody to um, give you an update on what those balances, where they're at with those projects. Mm -hmm. Sarah, on the um, on that form, has that form already been approved where we can go ahead and send that out? Or does this group need to see it one more time? We did approve it, I believe. Okay, so it's all set. Uh, yeah, but maybe we'll just, in a moment, just flash it up on the screen. Okay. So, yeah, so people or the any viewers can uh, know what we're talking about. All right, Sonia, I will just ask, you mentioned, um, you said something like permanently bonded. What's the, what's the upshot of that? That something, some, as opposed to what the short term? Well, we borrow we borrow what's called band bond anticipation notes while the project's happening, and once the project is complete or close to complete, if we're going out for a permanent borrowing, we'll add that to our um, to our list to go out there so that um, we make payments on bands so that we don't lose any time. So if we have a band and for three years, and then finally the project's done, and we want to permanently bond that then we can roll that over for, for the remainder of the borrowing period. So that as long as it's a ban, if we decide that we want to pay debt faster, we can do that um, through the budget year. But once it's bonded, you can't pay it down faster. I see, okay. So you're committed to those payments for the remainder, for the- Right, okay. right. Okay. And the, one, and the one thing to add to that is it locks in the interest rate for however long the bond is. So with a ban, it, it can change a little bit year to year. So it's always a little different each year. Um, with a bond now, we know exactly what it'll be every year until it's paid off. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Does anyone have any questions about money in general or what little we know? <laughs> I think we know that this year is this year's money. That sounds like a healthy balance. Is that or healthy? Yeah. Um, yeah. And is that I, I remember hearing from the CPA coalition, you know, good news, the Commonwealth's increased the whatever. Is this some of those matches starting to hit our? Well, um, I think the latest thing was saying that the state match. So it's for fiscal year 21 year and close. So whatever we took in actual for surcharges there with state with the um, just the tax part of it, they'll give us thirty two point three percent. That's what that's what they have right now. So I updated my financials to include thirty three point two percent of the one million that we originally estimated for twenty two. Because remember we're estimating to we we're still working with estimates in twenty two and we're going to be working with estimates for 23. So it's just like the operating budget. So I've got a um, 323,000 estimated for state match coming in in 22, which helps that balance. Okay, that's good. Right, Any anyone else have some questions? All right. So I do have a question at this time, Sarah. I just want to let folks know that I've got to drop. Um, oh. And I look forward to the next meeting. Go have fun on the Ferris wheel. Or well, well the, the, yeah. so just if anyone asked, they didn't actually open it. Uh, looks like they're going to do it tomorrow. But um, oh. so 
anyway, I'm I'm with the family. We're gonna grab some. Food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank anyway, you. thanks all. Bye. All right. So let's move on and look at some of the um, items that Sean sent out. I don't know who's going to be able to share them. Um, the agenda says review the proposal letter. I think what was meant was the form, the online form, which is going to go live next week. Yes. Yes. One. Yo, oh, okay. No. Do you all see the um, the form on the screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. I can make it a little bigger. Is that large enough? Well, it's filling the screen. We see the top only down to project titles. Okay. Just slowly, slowly scroll through it. Okay. I mean, this should be exactly what we had all decided on. Um, in April or maybe even March. Yeah, I believe there's some dates and stuff that needs to be updated on this, but we'll okay. do that. Well, well, then can you go back to the top? It said submit by Friday. Yeah, yeah. we'll make sure those are all correct. That's correct, yeah. Um, can we comment or uh, are we? Uh, well, if you saw something, sure, sure. Go ahead, Diana. Uh, well, I was wondering for the project overview, if we could put specific purchases under description of funding needed um, rather than under the proposal overview it seems like it would be more appropriate somehow, um, like specific purchases or, anyway, that's, that was one thing I was thinking about. Well, can you, can you hold it right there if there are more so we can discuss that? I don't know, uh, Sean or Sonia, if specific purchases, if that's new language, do we just we you can know. um we can modify it. I think the intent of those two fields was the, the first one is to describe what you want to do. And then the second part is how much you're gonna need for it and if there's any other sources of funding. Um that, that's for the project. Why I, Sean, that's why I thought specific purchases really belonged under description of funding needed. But it but it needn't be the amount. It, it's just what are the things you want. Yeah. What are the things you're going to do with it, I think is what it is meant for. And then the second box is really just how much is it going to cost and if you have any other um, I see. You have any other All funding. Right. All right, um, fine. Do we not want to say amount there? Apparently not. Well, well, well description of funding. Somewhere I, I saw total amount requested. Maybe it was further down or maybe further up. Um, I guess I have it in front. Yeah, it's right at the top underneath uh, project title. It says amount, it, Sean, if you go up, right yes. there, amount of funds requested. So there's the bottom line. And then that other field I think is to describe, you know, why you need that much money <laughs> and append a budget if you have one. Are the fields mandatory? They have a star um, asterisk, right? Yep, the ones yeah. that are, yep. <clears throat> Diana, did you have any other comments? Um, I, I think it was about the estimated timeline, um, okay. which you're right at now, stop. Okay. <laughs> um, stop. <laughs> I, uh, I don't, when the funds will be spent seems, uh, sort of not a very useful uh, parameter put in there, I guess. Um, the timeline to me that's important is uh, 
when the work will be done, which is, you know, the project completion. So including in the timeline when the funds will be spent isn't really what I think we care about. I well, care, we care about the timeline of the work. Well, maybe, maybe the finance department cares about <laughs> front loading the expenses. I don't know. Is that the only thing I could think of is there could be projects that are partially CPA funded and partially not. And so it may be the case that a project may start, but the CPA portion of that project may not be until later or closer to the beginning. Um, so this allows you to kind of distinguish between the full project and then when the CPA portion or when the CPA funds would be spent as part of that. Well, it is a second sentence. It is distinct from the first project yeah. timeline. So it does distinguish and allow both to be accomplished. I guess I would say that if that is uh, if that information is useful to the finance department, that's fine. I guess it's not particularly useful to the committee. As Diana says, we want to know that they can <laughs> complete the project in a timely fashion. Um, but I guess we're not worried about the the payment schedule, but if uh, Sonia and Sean want it there, then that's, that's fine. Um, my only concern is that these projects could get um, fully completed and spent within the three year timeline. Or I would, uh, that's what I like want too. And that's what I think the first sentence accomplishes. So is there any reason not to strike that second sentence, other than maybe the technical challenge of changing this form, <laughs> but I don't know. If Anya, I have a, can I ask a question? Yes. Did, yes. Can you remind me, are the funds, can they be for reimbursement? I mean, or um, do they have to show receipts? I can't remember what they have to. Yeah, um, it depends on the project and, and the whole scope. I mean, it, how the contract's written, there's a lot of. Uh, factors that go into that. I mean, I could almost see if there was, if the line said, describe funds encumbered, uh, funds remaining to be spent or something like that. It just, the way it is right now, it doesn't do anything for me personally, but it might be. I would, I, think yeah, I would advocate eliminating the second sentence because really what I think what we were after here is the project timeline, like when, what's the planning, when is the execution of the project, not about the cash flow. Right. You'd want to know the timeline because um, if they're not going to start until later on or closer to the next fiscal year or something, maybe, maybe this one goes below because other ones are going to start sooner. I don't know. So, and just building on what Sarah said, you may not want to do the timeline from receipt of CPA funds because that may be after the project's done or close to being done. If we're reimbursing them for the expenses, you probably just want to say, describe the project timeline um, and maybe leave it at that. So I think, I think the first sentence saying receipt of CPA funds is kind of misleading too, Sean, because- well, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, because by the time they get the CPA funds, really the project could be- Project approval, just from- right. Or, or the, you know, beginning from approval. Start to finish. <laughs> yeah, because the, this money won't be available until July of 2022. So you want to actually put that in and change it every year? Pro project timeline from beginning July 1st? Start to finish isn't bad. I think I we think do want to see the whole, sorry. Overall project timeline. Yeah. So I want to see if there's been a year of planning and architect pre, you know, pre-development. I think the, describe the project timeline from project inception to, to completion, something like that. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I like that from inception to completion. Describe the project timeline from inception to completion. Yeah, it's good. And you could show it in chart form, right? Or do you have to, or in, yeah. It could be attached. I, th I think there's is there... an attachment. Okay. Well, we don't really want a lot of description. I don't think I'd rather have a chart. Just be 
a list of, you know, August one, do this, you know, winter of whatever, you know, I, some projects are pretty small, you know, small. <laughs> we'll hire the painter or whatever. Um, okay. All right. So uh, maybe you can continue to scroll. So I have a question uh, at the end, the uploading the files. So this just means they can upload three files? Because it's the same thing three times. Yeah. Oh, I don't have that answer for you right now. We have to yeah, I think that's I think that's correct. The way it's set up is it allows you to add, attach three different things. I think there's some other fields up above where you can attach. Um, so you can attach a separate budget. So this would be additional attachments. OK. All right, and then let's see the affirmation, which I believe is new this year, or maybe. And this is, um, this is where we have to update one of the years, I think. Yes. We have 20. to update 22. Right. I was very glad to see the asterisk explained because so often they're not. So what would be the update, Sean, that you're referencing regarding the year, July 1st uh, of 2022? Yeah, 2022 um, to 2025. Five, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. That. Can you can uh, you move your cur cursor? Is it in the way? There. There. No, we were okay. seeing. Oh, okay. Seeing things. <laughs> seeing things. Uh, every. And are we sticking with this July Fourth? Prog. I mean, we want to go ahead with the July first progress report, but I believe you're doing something different for the current projects, yes? And we'll right. talk about that shortly, but this is what we want going forward. Yeah, um, it's, probably, it's probably better to have progress reports around October because we're in the middle of year end and closing out accounts and there's so, so many moving parts at June and July and through August that- You're not gonna look at them anyway. Right. <laughs> Well, and I think what we talked about is we want the reports to be through June 30th or through July 1st, but they won't be able to do that as of July 1st. They'll need probably a couple months after the end of the year to figure out where the financials are and then complete the report. So I think doing it through that date still makes sense, but it just might not be till September or October when we actually look at it. Well, we need to we need to finish this wording. Do you do we need I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you can work that out. Mm -hmm. We, we just want there to be something in this online form that makes clear the expectation. So can we just let Sean and Sonia work that out? Sure. Okay. All right, great. I, I have a question, uh, Sarah, on the form at the very top. Where it says, uh, it's a question for the, members here and uh, staff, where it says Community Preservation Act Committee proposal request form fiscal year 2023. I know what that means. I think most of the people here know what it means, but this is a form that's gonna be utilized by prospective applicants. Uh, and I'm wondering if there are applicants who won't know what that means. Uh, they may not understand the concept of filling out an application here now in 2021, but the form says 2023. And I'm wondering if some form of parentheses right. referencing the current cycle might assist uh, in those who aren't accountants or familiar with budgetary nomenclature. Right, I would put the date of October 1st, 2021 in the title and put in parenthesis FY 2023, because a lot of people are not familiar, as Stan said, with how we do budgeting. Um, so it seems so far ahead. So the date that you want your readers to pay attention to is October 1st, 2021. 
Can I suggest the following? And thank you for all this close reading. I think it might be simpler if the title were Community Preservation Act. Community, Community Preservation Act, delete committee, just Community Preservation Act grant application, strike everything else. And then in the instructions, all right, to say submit proposals by Friday, October 1st, 2021. Okay, fund this, this funding cycle, you know, the, the funds are available beginning July 1st. 2022. Because I know Sean and Sonia and everybody there thinks in the fiscal year, <laughs> in the, you know, in the, in the municipal fiscal year, but, but not, a, you know, the public. Generally doesn't, so I like that suggestion, Sarah. And thanks yeah. for bringing it up. Did we indicate proposals are due by Friday, October 1st, 2021, as opposed to submit proposals by Friday, 20? Is that distinction needed? I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Well, I, I actually think that's slightly better. Yeah. Um, proposals, yeah. Are, proposals are due. Right. Yes. It, it's, it puts a very finite point on it. Deadline, de the word deadline or yes, due date. <laughs> I would also consider if it were me, I, I don't know what others think, uh, putting that due date sentence in bold or highlighting it somehow uh, prominent if it doesn't appear elsewhere because it's of primary significance. Small detail. Anyone else have any thoughts on that? I agree with that. Anything to make it stand out is helpful. <laughs> then, it, then it could even be a, a second, a line immediately below the title that I think now we're saying should say Community Preservation Act grant application and immediately below could say due Friday, October 1st, 2021 at 4.30 p.m. Also in bold. Sounds good. So basically move it out of the introduction. Okay. Do you, you want me just to leave it in both places just so it's yeah. super clear? <laughs> I like that. I like okay. that. Yeah. Fine. But if but um, perhaps it should stay up front so people know that funds are not going to be available until, you know, if even if awarded, they're not going to be available until July 1st, 2022. So I can add something underneath the title that says um, submission oh. deadline, October 1st, or the, the date, and then funding oh, yeah, available fund July 1st, 2022, or funding grant window or something like that. So we can. Yeah, that'd be good. That there. Yeah, that'd be good. So, so can someone read what the header will say now? Uh, it, is it going to reflect your statement, Sarah? And can we hear that? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so Thank it's going to say Community Preservation Act grant application. And then underneath that, we're going to add the deadline and the, the date that funds will become available. Yeah, Much I'm not, oppo I'm not opposed to a reference of fiscal year 2023. It has value, but I just wanted to highlight the need for applicants who uh, may struggle with the concept of, you know, different budget time periods. Thank you. It's good. Great, good catches. Anything else? Continuous quality improvement. I love it. So Sarah, I'll make these updates or Sonia, I'll make these updates tomorrow and we'll send it out to the committee just so you guys all have a final clean version of it. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Sean. So, so this is okay to go ahead and post yes. on September 1st with those changes? Yes. Sure. Okay. And I, I asked Anthony to set up or arrange to make happen, and I think he said it would happen, to have the, you know, the, I don't know what you call it, the alert 
or the news item on the town website and maybe it goes out to subscribers announcing the proposal. Period. Like even the banner. Yeah. yeah. Well, people have to know. I mean, maybe maybe the town departments know, but and people who've applied before are kind of expecting it, but it, it should be announced, especially if we're wanting the community to you know, become more engaged with the program. It has to be announced. Yeah, so we can definitely add it to the, the web page, the homepage there, and then I'll check with Brianna to see um, what type of, I'm not sure exactly what people can subscribe to, but what things people might be able to subscribe to that we can put it on that would shoot them a, a notice that it's available. Yeah, cool. wonderful. And I hope that do the various um, town departments get alerted? Um, like, do they like, hey, recreation department? It's Yeah, we can let, we can let them know. We'll send an email out to the department heads and let them know it's available. Okay. All right. Um, I have another uh, question that aligns with what Sean just brought up and said. Uh, and that is that uh, since we're talking about the form, I, I believe this is the agenda time period to talk about it. Uh, on the web page, the CPA web page, on the upper left, there is a uh, header that says propose a project. It's an informational piece, uh, which consolidates quite a, quite a lot of information uh, that's useful, particularly the proposal evaluation and submission process. At the top, however, um, it indicates applications for the fiscal year 2022 round CPA funding are now closed. Uh, I think this is what you were referring to, Sean. Uh, but when I looked at the agenda items and the documents, this struck me as something that uh, a location where many community members might search and land and currently uh, they don't know what that means. And perhaps it could be changed to phraseology similar to apply for, you know, submit, click here to apply, click here to submit your proposal. Uh, and even perhaps instead of propose a project, which is sounding like one that would be the town is soliciting suggestions for projects, which is kind of what we're doing, uh, we might change that header to uh, application and or propose slash application. So I appreciate you uh, bringing up the subject of the information on the web page. I think it's highly relevant. Uh, there's a date down below where it says Monday, October 12th, 2020, under how do I propose a project to the CPA? That would need to be edited as well there. But I think it's a very, uh, my guess is it would get a fair amount of traffic that section and it's in our interest to uh, highlight application uh, and confirm the dates as you suggested. I'm, I don't I, know what I, I really think, uh, Sean, if you read it carefully, you'll fix it. Um, there are fall calendar dates that are wrong and, and yeah. we, we don't yeah. want anything being on our website that's wrong. Yeah, we can update. Well, I'll try to update that tomorrow. And my guess is Previously, when the window was still open underneath Propose a Community Preservation Act project on that web page, there must have been a link to click here or something yeah. um, that was then replaced with the window being closed. So I will we'll, we'll update that tomorrow. So it, it's not somebody doesn't go there, you know. And it might, I don't know. I don't know if it can be done going forward. That 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 menu item, propose a project or whatever, you know, submit a submit an application. That that just disappears once. Yeah, once the window closes, closes, right? It doesn't come back until the next. If yeah. if we had, there are other suggestions for the web landing page that I know Sarah and I had provided to Anthony previously. I know there's staffing issues. Uh, whom would we funnel those uh, inquiries and/or suggestions to? Uh, now that Anthony's no longer there, is it, I know you folks are quite busy. Does it go to our primary contact, Sonia? Uh, would we, ha does uh, 
Brianna do it? I'm ignorant as to. You can send uh, them directly to Sonia. Um, okay. And, and then we'll we'll take care of them. Okay. Uh, great. Thank you. All right. So now let's have a look at because we already um, this was mentioned in the application form. The award activity report. And Sean, you sent that one out too. So now you want these dates and you will need to change these dates if you want it, um, let's say October 15th, you know, but running through June 30th. So you need to alter that, is that right? Yeah, we'll, we'll update that too. I think we said mid-October and have it be, have the report be as of June 30th. Right, so again, this is, this is the form that is going to go, I, I don't know, I guess you're going to email a link or something to all the current, uh, what do you call them, accounts? Accounts? Grant? App grantees, yeah. Grantee, all the, all the current grantees, they haven't spent all their money yet, they're going to need to fill this out. Um, yeah, and this is, the, this is the affirmation on the current, the form that'll go live next week. They're gonna check the box at the bottom says, yes, we know we're gonna to have to fill out this form. Huh? Since they're already grantees and no longer applicants, can we assume by that time period, they'll understand the fiscal year reference? <laughs> can you go back to the top please, Sean? Fiscal year of original award, can we assume that at this point in their cycle, given that they're grantees, as opposed to applicants, that they would not be confused by fiscal year, or would we want any editing to that? I, I personally would like the idea of keeping both um, dates and having the fiscal year in parens, but um, just, just to keep it on the right track. Well, is that something maybe Sonia tells them? Like when, congratulations, you've, you know, you've been awarded this grant, do they get some formal, like here's the name of your project and it's, or I, I don't know, or do you wanna somehow fill it in, start filling it in for them? Like so, the title. yeah, uh -huh. so, so this is an online form, so we can't do it for them. Um, cause it would, they would click on it and it would start populating it. But I think whoever reaches, you know, we talked about who would reach out to the different, um, grantees, uh, they should know the fiscal year and help that, okay. help that group. If they don't know the fiscal year to identify the fiscal year. And if, and if nobody knows, Sonia will certainly know the fiscal year. Um, so. Yeah. It it should, not always, uh, yeah. Well, it shouldn't be that long ago. Right. That's the right. idea. So, all right. So this is, this is good to go. Great. So we did say, or the proposal, the application says, you're supposed to finish in three years unless you request an extension. So is there anything like, do, should the activity report have a box that says we need an extension or should we just assume that Sonia will be in touch with them? It's like, uh, what's going on? And then will Sonia come back and say, hey, this project, they need another 18 months. What do you think? Do we need to, I don't know that we need to decide that tonight, but I just wonder if there should be anything on the form, like if you don't think you're gonna be done in three years, please please call the finance department. <laughs> a reminder wouldn't hurt. Well, see, I sort of feel the opposite, like don't put it down there because they're supposed to be finished. And, you know, I would just let them reach out for an extension, but that's my personal opinion. I agree with I'm, that. And I, is the, the purpose of the report itself is that it will give the town a heads up if somebody's not running into obstacles and they can connect with them there. All right, so then we'll just leave it with just adjust the dates at the, the top and then it's fine. 
right? Okay, moving on, What's what do we have next? Um, I guess the agenda says prior year project balances. We don't have that yet, I assume. Right. Okay. We talked about that during the financial review. Right. We should have that by our next meeting. Okay. And will you present it or Holly? Holly did so last year. Might she come or does, does you can present it when you when it's available? Sure, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So the next item, policy additions or changes to be considered or implemented. Um, I think I think we were talking about committee operations, and one thing we spent a lot of time discussing last spring was how will we ensure transparency and consistency in the review process. So we spent a lot of time looking at a form that Robin drafted. And then if you've looked at it, I, I added some things. So I, I just went ahead and made some changes. So that's one option. And I also, or Sean sent out a link to the spreadsheet that Andy developed. I removed all the data, you know, so it's just, just the, just the form. Um, and what I would propose is that uh, at the first, at, at our first meeting, when we start to hear the uh, presentations, or if we need another meeting in October, you know, to, to, to address this, a very sh a short meeting, I would suggest that members be prepared to say in the meeting how they propose to review the projects. You know, what is their process going to be? I, I don't know that we, some people are spreadsheet people, some people are word people. So I don't, I, I'm not sure it's wise to insist that everybody follow the same protocol, but I do think it's important that we be able to say how each one of us is going to evaluate. So that's my suggestion. Anyone want to comment on that? I think that's reasonable. Sam? A uh, uh, reasonable thought process from, from you there, Sarah, regarding how you want to do it. Uh, my, my thoughts on the forms, which I reviewed, I like the primary and secondary listings on the spreadsheet. Uh, and my belief is that the forms are useful for informing committee members and or uh, applicants if need be. And they're actually referenced similar to uh, Robin's proposal on the propose a project on their website. That's one of the improvements. I think they're useful to inform uh, the areas that individuals want to consider. My own posture would be, I wouldn't want them to lock anyone uh, or myself into a ranking or determination, but it, I think they're useful. Uh, and that kind of falls in line with what you suggested. In other words, there could be eight different criteria in a spreadsheet or in what we look at for a um, project, but we may as individuals not consider each one of those criteria to be equivalent. So if they just go one point, one point. So, Long and short of it is I agree with you. I think they're great uh, additions. Robin's uh, highlighting the, uh, mirroring the uh, plan and Andy's delineating in a form that can be enumerated to inform right. as opposed to mandate. Any other comments? Robin. Uh, just that I think it's helpful, especially for new members coming in to have items like these to help guide them. I think when you come in blind and you haven't done grant review before, it really helps to kind of get a, it help set the framework for what you're looking for. And I would, I would, I will state for the audience <laughs> that what, the, that our process in the past, and again, it can be adjusted for the future, is that um, members read the proposals and evaluate them. And, and in the past, we've given them one to five uh, um, Rating. assessment ratings where, oh, I can't even remember now, five is best, right? Well, we love it, I think, yeah. Five is best and one was like, we don't like this at all. 
but they're not determinative. It's not that a project uh, gets approved or doesn't get approved based on those numbers. They've helped us order our discussion of the projects to see where maybe we're going to have tend to have consensus or what are going to maybe be the, pro the proposals that are going to be uh, need more discussion and more thrashing out. But we each have to, to go through them in a way that, um, you know, is consistent, is thoughtful from, uh, from proposal to proposal, right? So Katie, you're the, you're the pro. <laughs> I, well, I, I would just say that we discussed this quite a bit. And I think that this form that, um, I guess, Robin, did you, put together, um, I, it feels like as long as we're in agreement that those are the criteria that, you know, sort of the, the pieces of a proposal that we're going to evaluate and consider and wait and sort of prioritize and not have, it gives, um, you know, assurance to the applicants that we're not going to, each one of us have some other hidden value that we're going to wait more than some of these. It's, it's just so much better to, to be transparent in this way but as long as we're all in agreement and i think it's a great practice to say that we are in agreement that this is for this year going forward you know um committed to this and not having any one of us say yeah but i especially like this one because it's in my neighborhood or you know whatever the other quality or criteria that might come into play um and and not be known and not be apparent to um, the applicants, if that makes sense. So you're saying to have that, to be ex explicit about the factors that are leading us to our assessments, to have- Well, they're right there. I mean, right. Right. as you're long right. as I, I, yeah. And I just was saying, as long as we're saying to, that this committee is in agreement, that that's what we're going to be doing. And I'm not saying we have to do it tonight, but before we do the reviews. But are you suggesting that we the group needs to decide either to use this or something like this versus the spreadsheet version that's i'm not um angling for any specific tool just the criteria um you know that for example feasibility or that's you know making sure we understand that um that a project is feasible is that really important to all of us um is it you know clear and complete all, all those things that are you know I think we have to agree to. Um, so, but, but as you, hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> no, uh, we've already in the plan outlined what the criteria are, and I believe right. they're repeated in the application. Right. Um, I don't think we need to agree. On we've their, already agreed. On, their, on their relative, on their relative. Yeah. I mean, I think the benefit of having many people on a committee is that, you know. The, so you're, I, I apologize. You're saying that there, we've already agreed on it. It's been stated, it's in the application. So we don't need to redo that each year. Yeah. It's already done. I think so. I agree. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sam? And I would, again, reiterate anything we can do to steer potential applicants to that information is highly desirable. The plan which a lot of time was spent on does so. Uh, the current proposed a project landing page has elements of that down below. These forms are helpful, but that, that to me is the key. And the plan and the application do reference, a, any project will have its own distinctions in terms of how the individuals on the committee thinks meets the goals of their particular uh, category. Uh, but anything right. we can do, and I think we're making great progress uh, on that. Yeah. And I've I made think, great progress I, on that. Yeah, I think the virtue of this or anything is simply that you go through the whole list every time and right. you're not forgetting something. Consistency. And you're not adding so like, oh, I, you know, oh, here's this other factor. It's like, these are the things I'm going to pay attention to. Sean. Yeah, th th there is a little bit of a difference between what's on the website and what's on the form. I don't know if it matters, but there are a couple things on the proposal evaluation criteria that are on the website, um, like populations to be served 
is one that's not on the form. And then there's one about the priority ranking of the project by the relevant board or committee um, that might have maybe recommending it. So again, I don't know if those need to be in this form, but there's that's a little bit different than what's here. All the other things right. seem to be covered in both places. As well as meeting the goals of the Sam, your microphone is up. You're you got to bring it. Yeah, that now we can hear you. Yeah. Where it says in the spreadsheet, meet the goals of historic preservation, community housing, open space, and outdoor recreation. I don't think that's on the form, but it is in the plan, I believe. Yeah. Um, so that was my comment from before. Yeah. And the so populations to be served. You know, either they either they give that information or they don't, and and that enters is that has all the necessary information been submitted. And then what we make of it, you know, of the populations to be served, you know, we don't know. It could be any, you know, it could be anything. We're just interested to know who they're aiming their project at. Um, and, and we do have, at least in this, in this, and I'm sure the spreadsheet does also has the, uh, proposal been reviewed and endorsed by committees, by town commissions or boards or whatever. So I, I think it's there. I don't think we have to use exactly the same language. I think I think the factors are congruent. So, so I don't know. I haven't been the liaison to CPAC in a while, but um, all proposals were supposed to go through their respective committees. So any historic needs to go through the historic commission any recreation needs to go through C, um, recreation commission. And well, I don't think that's being really clear. Well, yes. And this is a, this is a, <laughs> this is why we were so eager to have this um, the proposal window announced like back in April or May so that people would know and they would have time to mm -hmm. develop it and take it to a committee. Um, you know, I think the, you still send out, let's say somebody proposes something about a, I don't know, historic preservation. If they haven't yet talked to the historic commission about it, that proposal is going to be sent to the historic commission, right? Robin, you're going to, you're going to get them all. Sooner. Yeah, that's Sooner. right. That's right. right. And, then, and then they go over them, and then Robin's come back to the meetings and said, "Here's what we think. Here's what we think of the proposals that that have to do." So yes, it would be great if they worked with the committees ahead of time. I don't feel like we've given them notice this year, so I would say we'll do the best we can. But given how early now in the fiscal year this CPA process is happening, I do think it's important, you know, if we can work it into every, <laughs> kind of into the master plan is to announce in the spring well ahead of time, you know, so folks can, can have that time. And some of the boards, they don't even meet in the summer, so. Hello, Anna, welcome. Did you just appear? I was in the waiting room for, for just a minute, but it's it's always nice. No, 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 literally just a minute. I don't know who caught me, but thank you. All right. It's nice to, you know, experience it as a participant. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Can you just let me know where we are on the agenda? We're getting near the end. Yep. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's okay. <coughs> uh, we were just talking about, well, someone had, um, Sonia had mentioned that the any proposal should have gone, been reviewed by the appropriate town department or board or whatever. And we're saying yes, and yes, but um, if, if uh, private entities don't know ahead of time when the proposal period is going to be, they may not have had the opportunity to get that done. So right. I, I'm hoping that next year we can announce earlier, like much earlier when when the pr proposals <laughs> can be submitted. Great, thank you. So, all right. Um, all right, so I think I'm hearing that 
we agree. And again, by the time we start to have presentations, oh, we may have different people on this committee. So we have to have this discussion again, but <clears throat> excuse me, each person is going to have a process, a consistent process for <laughs> reviewing and evaluating proposals um, and be ready to say what that process is, it's a form or a spreadsheet or whatever, okay? Um, uh, I think we've looked at everything that was sent out. Well, um, there was the deadlines and uh, timelines for our upcoming meetings. Yes, the calendar, yes. And I do have some suggested changes and uh, I can speak to them now or I can wait for you to call on me. Are you talking about the committee calendar? Yes. Whoops. Do you want me to, sorry, sir. That's Sarah, right. Do you want me to leave it up there? Yeah, uh, yeah that's fine. So, okay, we passed this, really isn't proposed anymore. We passed this back in March or April, I believe. But is there some, please tell us what you want us to know about this. All right, I will. Um, I think that the date of uh, Friday the 8th, uh, October 8th, should be changed to October 11th. Um, I think that we have to read all the proposals. We have to come up with questions for all the proposal uh, proposes. Um, and we have the short time period um, in which to turn that around. And I have always found that just incredibly pressured. So I am suggesting that we change the uh, eighth to the 11th and that the, the questions go out to the proposers on the 14th and that um, the answer deadlines be the 22nd as it is. Um, I just think it's a um, cattywampus because we have the most work to do and too short a time to do it. And they only have to deal with one proposal so that's why I think this is um, not a good allocation of dates. Thank you for raising that. I did. I was in discussion with Sonia and Sean last week, and I asked, "Do proposals? Do they all come at the you know at the end at the deadline, so that we get them all at once, or do they trickle in and we could be getting them and reviewing them, you know, spread out a little more?" Um, and I gather they do tend to come at the last minute. Anna, I see your hand, so just hold on a second. Um, yeah, Anna, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, I mean, I think if, we're, if we aren't expecting Sean and Sonia to be doing work over the weekend, does it, does it impact us deeply to shift it just to give ourselves two more days? I mean, I don't see a problem with that. Um, Diana, you know, I was, I had it on my bingo card that someone would use cattywampus in a sentence today. So I was glad that that happened. Um, but I do think that, yeah, I mean, I, I think unless we're asking Sonia and Sean to compile those questions and send them out over the weekend, I'm curious if that can happen on the same day. If we have the deadline at, you know, noon on Monday to give ourselves the weekend, can those get out to the to the folks that night, or is that putting too much pressure on you, Sean and, and Sonia, or whoever is going to be or Sarah? I don't know who compiles them actually. Well, it hasn't been me. <laughs> it's been Anthony. <laughs> There's a lot of questions that came in last go around to sort and eliminate duplications of what uh, my guess is it would need at least a day. Not being the one who's done it, but having seen all the volume. So, okay. Sonia, well, I don't I, know how I, you. I thought the time frame that I was discussing gave them three days before they actually had to compile or get the, all of the compiled questions to the proposees. So I'm, I, I really, it's the date of the eighth going to the eleventh, and what the, and then the. 11th to the 14th, which must yeah. be a, a Thursday or something? Yes, it is. I, I think that um, we can compile them based on the schedule that the presentations are happening. So whatever proposals I have, 
once I have all the questions, we can work on getting the ones for the first presentation ready and so forth. So if you're not looking to have them all the answers to all the questions all at once, we can we can make it work. If, if you can tell us the presentation order, that'd be great. I don't think we've known that in here that yet because we don't have any proposals. Right. Just, just having the extra time to read the proposals we get and come up with questions will be a huge help to whoever is serving on the committee. It has been, it has felt very tight. Thank you. So are we gonna update those dates to the 11th and the 14th? Yes, please. Uh, and that's my <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> I, I would agree with that. I don't think that has to be, you know, put on the website. This is just our internal, um, workflow, um, but I, unless there is a reason that doesn't work, I think it, as Diana says, it, <laughs> you guys don't have to compile them over the weekend. I mean, you don't want to do that, so. Um, yeah, let's let's make that change or aim, aim to keep to those new dates. If, you know, if, if it's, if we only get eight proposals this year, it won't be won't be too hard, but we might get twenty. That sometimes happens. All right. Um, I was wondering why Wednesday, November tenth, and not Thursday, the eleventh. What am I missing? Is it Flag Day or Veterans Day? Veterans Day. <laughs> Veterans Day. Okay. I, I thought it might be, but I wasn't sure. All right, so these, please put these dates on your, on your, oh, Sam, did you have your hand up? Uh, I think in time it would be of value when we complete whatever our calendar is to have it available for uh, community members to see just so, um, were I submitted an application, I'd be anxious as to how, you know, what the process might be and how it might be perceived. I think it would be beneficial for them to recognize early on that there will be an answer, questions coming back to them and, you know, a time period to respond to it. There might be a few applicants, maybe, uh, who might have vacations or whatever scheduled and if they knew in advance. It's not crucial. I realize it's our internal uh, I think any information provided uh, to the community uh, would be of value. It is in the plan, I believe, as part of the, you know, the pro how the process goes is that they get if questions we, and they send answers. If, if they get to the plan, if, you know, anything to highlight what they need to do is worthwhile. We can post the schedule. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that'd be good. It'd be good to do it. So Sarah, given the schedule, when is our next meeting? It wasn't our next meeting is October twenty eighth, unless October. Yeah, unless people think we have a reason to meet <laughs> during the proposal period, you know. Otherwise, which which I, you know, frankly, if if we get the whole new membership kind of set up. Maybe we could have a little meeting just to meet each other and talk about, you know, especially if they're people new to the committee, to have them just show up for the first time and be hearing from applicants. Um, might be nice to have a short meeting if, if staff can accommodate that. So, so that's what I would propose if we have new members new to see. And maybe, I don't know if it'd be a Thursday, we would maybe put out a doodle or something and see when we can meet, okay? All right. Um, there, I don't think there are any topics I didn't reasonably anticipate, but I did want to make uh, an announcement. I think most of you know, some of you were there that the Kendrick Park playground opened officially this week. It's absolutely gorgeous. I saw Sam and Anna, and if any of the others of you were there, I'm sorry I didn't <laughs> see you in your masks or whatever. It's it's really wonderful. So 
remember that was um, half CPA money basically and uh, half of a park grant. So, so it's really great. It's a great thing for the center of town. So I don't think I have any more announcements. I think you know about the whole library project business that will be on that, that whole project, but not the CPA part. The CPA part was still contingent. So um, whether that expansion uh, renovation project moves ahead, it will be up to the voters on November 2nd. Sarah. Yeah, two things. I just wanted to say thank you to Robin and to oh, Diane. Yes. Um, it's been a pleasure serving alongside you both. Um, and then I was gonna say, is there any recognition of Anthony? Has he already left? I feel like he is a really great public servant who should be recognized. And I would love to do that as, on a, as a committee. Um, is there any, has he left this town? Yes, he's already started his new job. Oh, it's over, okay. Gone. I, I stopped by. He can still get a recognition. Yeah, we can make sure. Or, yeah, um, gosh, I hope some of you maybe had a chance to email or, or call. Yeah, I did stop by and <laughs> thank him in, in person. Okay. Very much. Great. Right. He was really exceptional. Okay. So patient with us. <laughs> so, Very patient. So patient with us. <laughs> A really patient person. <laughs> yes. Sam. Uh, I'm glad you brought that all that up, Sarah. And uh, I also want to thank Robin and Diana. It's been a great pleasure serving with you. I've found your uh, scrutiny and uh, thought processes and uh, to be very helpful to me and to the committee. And uh, you've also been uh, very personable and uh, easy to get Thank along you. with. Uh, it's, I, I wish you well, and uh, it's been great. The committee will be losing two very, very uh, helpful individuals. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. All right. Thank uh, you. So unless somebody has some new business or announcements, we will adjourn. Uh, and meet again on the 28th, if not ahead of time briefly to welcome new members, okay? All right, thank you, everyone. Thank Good you, night. Diana. Thank you, Robin. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Good everybody. Night. It's been a pleasure serving with you all, all of you. Yeah. Our Good pleasure, night. my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.